Hey guys and welcome back to a new video, GPT-4, so the next version of the AI that powers ChatGPT just got released and it has some crazy advantages to its previous version GPT-3. In this video, I will show you how you can best use these advantages as a mobile developer to make your life easier. The main difference is that the new AI GPT-4 is now multimodal, which means that it can also accept visual input apart from text input. That means you could give it something like an image of the contents of your fridge and it will give you recipe ideas with what you could do with that content. Currently, the GPT-4 version of ChatGPT does not offer a way to use image input yet. That is only available via the developer API where you need to join a waiting list and then just hope for the best. However, I assume that this will soon come for the public as well, so it makes sense to learn now what you can then do with it. And right now, we can still use its full potential with text input. And before I get started with four use cases that will help you to massively save time as a mobile developer, you have to know about one main limitation of GPT, and that is that it was trained on an older data set, a data set from 2021. So that means it can't know topics that came after 2021. Especially for the quickly changing mobile world, it's very crucial to understand that because it will not give you good answers for questions about the latest libraries or frameworks like Jetpack Compose. And at the time I record this video, you can actually only get access to ChatGPT powered by GPT-4 if you purchase their paid plan. So let's find out how we as mobile developers can save dozens of hours of time. The first way is especially aimed at beginners just learning mobile development. Since you don't need to learn the latest tech at first, but rather just the foundation of mobile development, so things about the operating system and just the basics, ChatGPT will be able to perfectly help with that. In my experience, it's much faster to just ask ChatGPT a question or to explain a certain topic than to perform hundreds of Google searches. So for example, here I asked GPT-4, you can see the model is GPT-4, what is the difference between quarantine scope and global scope in Kotlin, and I explicitly asked it to explain that in terms any programming beginner can understand. And if you include that in your query, ChatGPT will really consider that and give you a super simple to understand answer. So in this case, for example, it started to give us a broad summary of what a curtain scope and global scope actually is, while then diving a bit more into detail um, for each of these. And what I like the most about this is because I asked it to explain it in terms any programming beginner can understand, and it actually gave us a really good metaphor here. So imagine you have a group project at school, coroutine scope is like the group itself. When the project is over, all tasks assigned to the group members are considered completed or cancelled. And that is exactly what a coroutine scope is in Kotlin, or at least how it works. Then it explains something about global scope, well then using the same school project analogy, where it says it's like assigning a task to a single student who is not part of a specific group. And that student will continue working on the task independently, even if other groups finish their projects. And that is exactly what global scope is. That is a coroutine scope that is not cancelled at a specific time, since it just lives as long as your application does. Well, with coroutine scope, with the first version, you can control its life cycle, so you can control when the tasks of your group members are actually finished. And I think this explanation ChatGPT gave us here is much better than what we know from most blogs or so. So definitely don't ignore this if you're learning some kind of programming topic to just ask ChatGPT to easily explain a certain concept. So let's get to way number two, how you can save a lot of time using GPT-4 and its capabilities. Once the option to pass images to it is available to you, then you could use it to actually pass in a Figma design and ask it to generate a responsive layout based on that design. For most types of design in mobile development, implementing that is mainly straightforward unless you're really dealing with some complex animations or complex layouts. However, it still usually requires quite a lot of time to implement a design that is rather simple because you will have to consider all the different screen sizes and screen types. With the help of GPT-4, you can save a lot of time there by just passing in your Figma design and then looking over the code and just having some final adjustments. And when we already talk about more more complex animations and layouts, let's get to way number three, how you can massively save time with ChatGPT. And that is creating animations for your projects. Right now, you can describe the animation you want in text form and then ask ChatGPT to generate the necessary code to get exactly that animation. For example, here I asked it to show me how I can build a Pong-like animation in Android using Kotlin where a circle bounces at the edges of the screen. So we just want to have an animation where a circle moves around our screen and then bounces on each edge of the screen. This didn't even require two full lines of description here and it gave me the full code for this animation. And here's actually what it gave me. So it does exactly what I described. I only needed to adjust one single variable name which uh, resulted in a conflict. And this is really an animation where I would also first of all need to sit down and think about, okay, 
okay, how do I best implement this in Android? But with the help of ChatGPT and GPT-4, I did not even need to think about how to implement that because it gave me the full code. And once you're able to provide images and videos as inputs, then you might also be able to actually give it an input in form of a GIF or a video that shows an animation. And then based on that, you can ask it to recreate that in code. And coming to the last point, point four, I'd like to give you something that is not directly related to mobile development, but can be perfectly used for that. So as I said, GPT-4 currently has its issues with up-to-date content, which mobile development heavily consists of. But what it is insanely good at is at creating simple scripts using something that doesn't really get outdated, for example, shell or Python scripts. So if there's anything for mobile development you think you could automate with a simple script, but you're just too lazy to write it, let GPT do it. For example, here, I describe that I'm an Android developer who often has the problem that my project folder becomes too messy because there are too many experimental projects in it. I mean, who doesn't know it? We create projects all the time just to try out new things and then our project folder ends up being really messy. However, usually we're too lazy to recycle all these projects so they end up polluting our project folder. So I asked GPT-4 to give me a shell script that moves all these folders, excluding subfolders, that contain the name experimental. So I usually include that name in my experimental project. And I asked it to move these into an, a separate experimental folder. And as you can see, it gave me a perfectly working shell script, which does exactly that. You can also easily adjust that um, and adjust the name here. And it also told me how to use that. So it also told me that I actually need to give it uh, permission to execute. And then finally, how I'm supposed to run it. And I tried it out. It works perfectly fine. And this is really where I see a big potential in ChatGPT right now, because you really don't need to be a developer or no shell scripting at all to be able to generate such scripts. And during our work days, we, we very often have very repetitive tasks, which we still need to do manually because there is some kind of pattern we would only need, we would only be able to implement in code, which we're too lazy to do, or which we don't just don't know how to do. And then we could just ask GPT here to give us a script that solves our problem. And now I'm curious how you use ChatGPT and GPT-4 as a mobile developer. Do you have any awesome tips and tricks to share? Let us know that down below. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of the week. Bye bye.